everybody. We hope you're having a great Christmas day. It's become a tradition for us to have a Christmas service here in Odie's house and bring it to you. And we want to give you wishes of great Merry Christmas Day. Hope you have a great day with your family, friends, eat a lot of good food, celebrate the reason for the season that Christ Jesus came in the form of a man. God became man. God with us. Oh, a great thing to celebrate. It brought wonderful joy into the world. We're going to sing a little bit of that for you this Christmas morning. Joy to the world. CDs and then we put it on our Christmas CD. It's a uh, it's a song that talks about his birth and his sacrifice, but we classify it as a Christmas song because one could not have happened without the other. Easter would have never taken place without the crucifixion. The crucifixion would have never taken place without the incarnation. Thank God that he came. He was all the world needed, it seemed. He was the healer. He was the creator. He was the miracle worker. He was the sea walker. But he was not a savior until he was born here as a man and gave his life for you and I. Sing this song, Kelly Joe. Though we had all the power and riches desire there was yet one position he had not acquired. He was a king with a
Corinthians 9 15 one verse thanks be unto God for his unspeakable 
gift. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. I want to talk to you a moment about the must-have gift for 2022. The one gift everyone must have for 2022. I love the Christmas season. I love almost everything about it. I love the lights. I love the decorations. I love the food. I love the special Christmas services. And I especially love Christmas music. Christmas music has played a huge part in my life. It has kept me sane at times when nothing else seemed to work. I love it. Kelly and I, several years ago, were preparing for a winter storm, and it was one of those storms that was going to come in and, and maybe drop several inches, and like we would have been preparing for this, this last week, and, and many of you had a, a lot of snow, and it was certainly horribly cold, but it was one of those snows. We already had four or five inches on the ground, but we decided, she decided we need to get a few things from Walmart to be totally prepared. And so we went to Walmart. We went inside, got our buggy full, paid for it. We come out and there's several inches of snow on the ground. And, and I'm just going back and forth in the parking lot with the, yeah. with, a, with the grocery buggy. Kelly's got a hold of my arm. She's just holding on for dear life. And I'm singing, it's the most wonderful time of the year with the kids jingle belling and everyone telling you be of good cheer it's the most wonderful time of the year and we're just sailing back and forth sliding in the snow here comes a guy toward us walking up from his car toward the door he's got his hands way down in his pockets he's got his hat pulled way down low. It's bitterly cold. And he said, I need to see your doctor. I need some of the drugs that you're on. But I wasn't on drugs. I was on Jesus. I was happy that Jesus came to save my soul. And I, although I'm not a fan of snow, I've had all the snow I need for the rest of my life. I don't need any more of it. But I was just having fun because it is a wonderful time of the year. I don't need any more cold. I could, I could be satisfied going south for Christmas rather than coming north. I would never, ever, ever come back to Ohio in December again if it wasn't for my family wanting to see people that were related to them. I tell my family, you come south to me or I'll be up there in August to see you when it's warmer. But it is a wonderful time of the year. Thank God for Christmas time. Thank God that he came. And I love that song. It's not, a, it's not a religious song, but it is a wonderful time of the year. But my favorite Christmas song, many of you have heard me say this over and over and over, is God rest ye merry gentlemen. I love the gospel in this song. God rest ye merry gentlemen. Let nothing you dismay Remember, Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day. Why? Why did he come? To save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. What comforting and joyous tidings that he came to break Satan's power when mankind had gone astray. Play some of that, Kelly Joe, if you don't mind.
you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day to save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Tidings of the same, how that in Bethlehem was born the Son of God by name. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Listen to this. Fear not, said the angel. Let nothing fright. This day is born a Savior of the pure virgin bride to free all those who trust in Him from Satan's power and mind. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of Dismay. Remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day. Oh, hallelujah. I love the Christmas music. I love it all. However, with all of our focus on the Christmas music, on the Christmas message, on the Christmas food, on the Christmas get-togethers, the focus of Christmas in modern times for many decades and probably will be till the end of time has always been the presents. What are we getting someone for Christmas? What are we receiving for Christmas? I, I love to give gifts. I'm not real gracious at receiving gifts. It's not that I'm not thankful for them. It's just that I, I often don't know how to express that thankfulness. You know, I, I just, I don't really, I don't, I, don't, I don't know how to say it like I really mean it. I've often said, I just ask for socks for Christmas. That's, at the, that's the lowest thing you can get. And if you get socks, then you get what you ask for. And if you get something else, then it's a bonus. Well, I've already received a couple gift Christmas gifts this year. One of my first cousins bought a pan of cabbage rolls from the Waynesville Sauerkraut Festival the second weekend in October, put them in the freezer and brought them to me the other day. And I have enjoyed those sauerkraut, uh, cabbage, cabbage roll. rolls with sauerkraut. Mm -hmm. I have loved it. And then I received another Christmas gift from another first cousin. And you know what he got me? He got me socks. <laughs> You heard me say that. Gold toe. Gold toe nice. socks. Nice socks. And he gave me a bonus gift too, but I want you to see. I want you to see the <laughs> socks. What you asked for. Always get what you ask for. If you get socks, you're doing pretty good. So thank you. You all know who you are. Thank you very much. And so the gifts become the focus of Christmas. And there's always that one gift. Maybe not every year, but a lot of years. There's been a gift that every kid had to have. The marketing department's got it just right. They got it in front of the right eyes and the right people reported on it or it was in the right cartoons or whatever. It was in the right catalog on the right page and, and it, it just hit for whatever reason. And, and that toy became the it gift. And I've seen several of these in my lifetime. Let's... Let's, let's look at a few of these. First one that I remember in my lifetime was 1975. I'll give you a moment to guess what it was. 1975, the gift that every kid had to have was a mood ring. You remember those mood rings? Oh, you remember mood rings? I've heard 19, you talk about them. 1975, <laughs> 10 years before Odie was born. 
but everybody had to have a mood ring. 1980, the Rubik's Cube. What a craze that was. Did you ever figure out how to do it without taking yeah, it apart? The stickers off. Take the stickers off. <laughs> Kelly actually figured out how to do it. She 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 figured out it out and worked read on the instructions. Read the instructions. <laughs> she could do it in a couple of minutes. We heard. thought that was really something until we found a guy that could do it in about a minute with his toes. <laughs> Saw it online. That's a real thing. And then 1981, the Smurfs. Every little kid had to have a Smurf. Thankfully, Odie wasn't born yet. We didn't have to buy one of those things. 1983, Cabbage Patch Dolls. Everybody had to have parents had to drive to go get them. Oh, there's some in Indianapolis. Oh, they're out. There's some in Detroit. They're out. There's some in Pittsburgh. There's some in Lexington. There's some in Columbus. And you just, parents were crazy to get these because their kids had to have them. The It gift. 1985, the year Odie was born, Care Bears. Did you ever have a Care Bear, Odie? Oh, okay. You had all kinds of bears. I'm surprised you didn't have a Care Bear. And then 1989, Game Boys. That's a little past my time, and Odie wasn't interested in things like that, but that was a huge craze, 1989. 1992, the reason I don't wear purple today, <laughs> the talking Barney. You get a guy as big as me wearing purple, you're going to get Barney comments every single time. What a craze that was. And finally... 19, not well, 1995, I was 92, 95 was Beanie Babies. Everybody had Beanie Babies. Some people think they still have a fortune in Beanie Babies, but they don't. They may have a bunch of them, but they're not worth anything now. And then 1996, Tickle Me Elmo. Who could forget Tickle Me Elmo? Every kid had to have an Elmo. And these kids, if you were a toy marketer or you were a toy manufacturer, if you could come up with one toy that every kid in America felt like they had to have, you could make your riches. I've told Odie, I've told Kelly, if we could come up with something that every kid had to have, you know, you only get to sell maybe 50 million of them, but, you know, if you make a dollar a piece or make 50 cents a piece, that would probably be enough. <laughs> 25 million would probably be enough to do us the rest of our lives, and we could trust God for the rest. But we haven't been able to come up with one. And most toy companies will never have that one toy that everybody has to have. The one must-have gifts. What is that gift for 2022? Well, I don't keep track of the toys. I don't know what's going on in the toy world. I don't really keep track of what's going on in the gaming world or board games or anything else of that much. Because Odie's past the toy stage. And although we may buy a few toys for kids, we're not really involved in that scene. But I do know the must-have gift for 2022. And that is the gift that I read to you about, God's unspeakable gift. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. Now, that doesn't mean that we can't talk about it. It's unspeakable in the sense that it can't be talked about. It's unspeakable in the sense that it's, it's indescribable. You cannot completely and adequately describe the gift that God gave. But let me tell you about it. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. That's the unmeasurable amount of love, so loved. God so loved that he gave. His only begotten son. Oh, what a gift. He gave his son because he loves us. The gift God gave the world was Jesus Christ. And on that Christmas day, if it was in December, if it was in April, it doesn't really matter. On that Christmas day, in a manger, born to a virgin, was the son of God given to us to save our sins, save our soul from sin. In that gift, there's three things. I'm gonna give them to you real quick and I'm gonna let you get to your family today. One of the parts of that gift is the atonement for sin's punishment. Sin will kill us all. We all deserve the punishment of sin, 
but the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. My sin, your sin, your sin. God laid our sin on Christ and Christ nailed our sins to the cross. Oh, hallelujah. He made atonement for sin's punishment. All these things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. He brought our sin debt, which was way up here. He brought it into balance. He reconciled that sin debt and brought it into zero. It's like balancing your checkbook, reconciling your checkbook. The sin debt was high, but he paid the price and brought the sin debt into zero. Hallelujah. He gave us the atonement for sin's punishment. And he gave us the antidote for sin's poison. The destructive element of sin is the poison of sin. It poisons us. It, it infects us. It's infected all of humanity. Nobody's free from it. Nobody's born without sin. Christ was the only one born without sin because Adam wasn't his father. God was his father. And he purchased the church with God's blood. That was God's blood in his vein. And he is the antidote for sin's poison. You gotta have a powerful antidote for some poisons. A friend of mine was telling me that the average snake bite in their state, he works in the hospital system, I think he said about $35,000 worth of anti-venom to, to counteract that snake bite venom. Very few snake bites are, are fatal in America. Number one, because we have that anti-venom, but it's very expensive because it's a, a process to get it. You gotta actually milk those venomous snakes, get venom from them and process it and make it, it's not something that I'm gonna go out and do. And if I was gonna do it, I'm gonna charge a whole lot for it because I'm risking my life. It's a very expensive thing. But only a few people are gonna be bitten by a rattlesnake or by a copperhead or a water moccasin every year. But every human is infected with sin. We're all poisoned with it. We've all taken a dose of it at our birth. But Christ is the antidote for that poison. He neutralizes sin's poison and makes it harmless to you. It took his life, but it made it harmless for you if you accept the gift. You have the atonement for sin's punishment and you have the antidote for sin's poison. And finally, the gift that God gave us is the answer to sin's power. It's the answer to sin's power. Not only are we forgiven from sin, not only is the punishment taken away, not only is the poison neutralized, but the power that sin has over us is gone. How many of you, I'm going to say, if you've ever prayed about anything, probably all of you have went to the altar, have found a place to pray somewhere, and you said, God, this thing I'm doing is killing me. This thing that's got a hold of me, this, this deed, this habit that's got a hold of me, and I can't get rid of it, and I, I need forgiveness, Lord. I, I, I don't want to do it again. I'm never going to do it again. I want to be washed clean, Lord. I want to be clean, and you know God forgave you. You know he heard you when you prayed. And by the next week, you were right back there saying again, God, I, I told you I wasn't gonna do that again. And I promise I'm not gonna do it again because they had power on me. Lord, I'm not gonna smoke it again. I'm not gonna take it again. I'm not gonna drink it again. I'm not gonna go there again. I'm not gonna say that again. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna look at that again. I'm not gonna read that again. I'm not gonna watch that again. And you really mean it. And you know God forgave you from doing it before. And you're never going to do it again. Yet you find yourself going back to that over and over and over again. That's because sin has power. It has dominion over us in our lives. But Christ, the gift of God, can break the chains of our sin. I was just talking to a man just the other day and he was telling me, telling me about how free he is since God broke the chains of sin 
and the freedom has brought so much joy into his life. And I can testify to that. And millions of others can testify to that. God's gift this Christmas can break the chains of sin, the power that sin has over you. You've been forgiven before, but you're still struggling with something that's killing you. And Christ can break the chains. He can take it. Break sin's power over your life. What a wonderful Christmas present. Better than the socks I received. Better than the cabbage rolls. Better than the money I've been given. Better than whatever Odie has that she hasn't given me yet. They're back here behind me. I'd say there's eight or ten of them at least underneath this tree. Mm -hmm. Just for me, my name on it. But I got a gift for you that's greater than that. A gift that's greater than a car, a house, a guitar, a dog, a gun. It's the greatest gift that's ever been given. God so loved the world that he gave Christ for you. The atonement for sin's punishment. The antidote for sin's poison. And the answer for sin's power. Oh, hallelujah. What a precious gift. Would you pray with me? Thank you, Father. What a privilege it is in this Christmas service together with my family, my precious wife and my precious daughter and speak to hundreds, maybe thousands eventually of families that will gather with us today and beyond today. What a privilege it is, Lord, to tell of what you gave to us greatest gift you've ever given the gift of salvation the gift of Christ for humanity divinity became humanity the son of God came down and became the son of man so that the sons of men might become sons of God oh thank you Lord for taking sin's punishment, sin's poison, and breaking sin's power as the ultimate Christmas present for 2022. Lord, as, as we turn to you and confess our sin and ask you to forgive our sin, Lord, I know you will wash us and cleanse us and break the chains. How do I know that? Because that's what you came to do. That's the kind of God that you are. Do that, Lord, for people under the sound of our voices this Christmas. What a Christmas gift. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The gift is yours today. Joy to the world. Joy into your home, into your heart this Christmas day. From our family to yours. Have a joyous, joyous Christmas.